Tehran's Grand Bazaar is known as the financial hub of Iran. But this center for trade is also a place where the economic crisis is being felt. And it is here that we get a sense of public sentiment. Compared to last year, the prices have increased by 150 percent. I earn in the local currency, but prices are based on dollars. Under the arched ceilings, the kilometers of corridors, and amid the hustle and bustle of stores, are stories of struggle. Iran is suffering from inflation. There's also the currency depreciation that successive governments have blamed on international sanctions over its nuclear development program. There are those who believe Iran should be part of the international financial system. We should talk with the world. We should talk with the, all the country, all the neighbor, which uh, most of the percentage of the, our people is accepted. In a few days, a new leadership will be voted into office, and presidential hopefuls are promising to address the financial challenges. But many say they've heard those promises before. I am not going to vote because presidents can do anything. They don't have the authority to do anything for people, and life is very expensive. Living standards, particularly among the middle class, have worsened in recent years. Skilled workers are leaving, and there is little prospect for foreign investment because of sanctions. There is another election that could have implications on Iran's economy. In a few months, there may be a new administration in the White House. Donald Trump, who reinstated tough economic sanctions on Iran after pulling out of the nuclear deal in 2018, could make a political comeback. Iran's economy relies on crude exports, which have increased due to the easing of sanctions under the Biden administration. But the rise in government revenues is not being felt on the streets, and the local currency, the rial, is already trading at nearly 600,000 to the dollar, a 15-fold increase since 2018. Zena Khodr Al Jazeera, Tehran. Well, let's speak to Mohamed Reza Farzanegan about this. He's a professor of economics at Phillips University of Marburg. He's joining us from Germany. Thank you so much for being with us. The economy, a huge concern, as we heard there, for Iranians. What is, first of all, driving this high inflation in Iran? Is it just down to the sanctions? Well, there are a couple of typical drivers of inflation in oil-based economies. When there is a positive change in the oil prices, we talk about Dutch disease, but when the oil prices are declining, uh, often the budget deficit and the way that the government usually finances deficit, but borrowing from central bank is in liquidity. But in the case of Iran, we have also two other factors uh, which are contributing to these inflation rates uh, in the country. One of them is the sanction, the other is the corruption. In the case of sanctions, uh, basically my estimations uh, in a comparative study shows that uh, when we compare Iran to a group of uh, you know, similar countries before sanction after sanctions, mm. we do see that the sanctions contributed to an excess inflation rate of about eight percentage point per year. Okay. So in other words, in the absence of sanctions, this inflation rate could be much more lower. You mentioned sanctions, but also corruption as a driver of the inflation, how does the corruption manifest itself in everyday life in Iran? Well, the sanctions, uh, one of the ways or channels through which the sanctions negatively affect the Iranian economy is through amplifying corruption and seeking activities. Mm. We are observing uh, the barriers for international trade, uh, the devaluation of Iranian currency, has resulted to uh, an exchange rate, the multiple exchange rate system. The government uh, needs to rationing the available uh, resources for imports. And some of these goods receive the subsidized rate and some not. And that provides uh, an ample of opportunities for the rent seeker to engage in the trade, missing voicing and illicit trade and smuggling beyond the fact that the sanction has increased the transaction cost. Yeah. So when you cannot trade directly with the other countries, basically you need the intermediaries and that results to higher costs of trade and the production and the consumer prices at the end. All of the candidates, the six candidates, have agreed that the sanctions have a devastating effect. 
which one of them do you think is, is better placed today to address this issue and, and the impact on the economy? And are we likely to see uh, a resumption of negotiations with the West uh, over these sanctions and the nuclear deal? Well, I guess there's a, there's a concept that the sanction has uh, damaged the Iranian economy in a significant way. But when we look at the numbers, the, the estimation shows that the lost income on average per year in the purchasing power parity, main, mainly that means adjusting for inflation and uh, looking the other uh, adjustments. So it is around $340 billion, which Iran is losing per year on average because of the direct damage of sanctions and the lost business opportunity to the other countries. Now, there is an agreement among all these candidates to deal with the sanctions, but obviously one of them, uh, which basically has emphasized normalization of the relationship using the experts uh, in the dialogue with the other countries, uh, uh, I, I see that, for example, Dr. Pedeshkian uh, has uh, announced a more clear uh, agenda to negotiate with the West and normalization in the relationship over the nuclear program of Iran. So uh, this is uh, what I observed from the recent debates in Iranian media. And, and so do you think we're going to see, uh, you know, significant changes once the president is elected? And what do you think, you know, besides, of course, uh, uh, you know, lifting the sanctions, what do you think the, the top priority of the next leader should be when it comes to uh, uh, reviving the Iranian economy? Well, as I said, the, the sanction basically is contributing to uh, a lot of economic costs on Iran. So it is clear that the lifting of sanction already regain uh, business opportunities for uh, economic sectors in Iran, and it will basically increase the welfare of the society because we can simply do the trade with the rest of the world without needing the intermediaries. The central bank sanction would be lifted, the oil embargo would be lifted, uh, and that brings the society to a normal doing business. So many of the corruption uh, incentives will be disappear, uh, but at the same time, it requires other reforms in the economy. So it's not the only removal of the sanction, mm -hmm. it is associated with the political reforms, the also digitalization of the economy, the all other factors which are affecting the expected costs of engaging the corruption expected benefits. Uh, because recently we do see that the control of corruption indicated in Iran uh, or in its worst situation, according to the World Bank. So uh, uh, I guess there's a, there's a very serious um, need okay. for reform the, need reform the politics and regain the trust of people to the system. Thank you so much for explaining this so clearly to us, uh, Mohamed Reza Farzanagan, Professor of Economics uh, in Germany. Thank you for your time. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to get the latest news from Algeria.